go to page 85, paragraph 3, bottom of the page. So first of all, let me start by saying thank you everybody for being here today. My name is Ken and I am an alcoholic. Step 11 suggests prayer and meditation. We shouldn't be shy on this matter of prayer. Better men than we are using it constantly. It works if we have the proper attitude and work at it. It would be easy to be vague about this matter, yet we believe we can make some definite and valuable suggestions. When we retire at night, we constructively review our day. Were we resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? Do we owe an apology? So what does it mean when we retire at night? Yeah, before we go to sleep. Yeah, before you fall asleep, constructively review your day. Look to see which character defects were flaring up. Have we kept something to ourselves which should be discussed with another person at once? Were we kind and loving toward all? What could we have done better? Were we thinking of ourselves most of the time? Or were we thinking of what we could do for others, of what we could pack into the stream of life? It's just like the third step, right? Were we thinking of ourselves, our plans, and our designs, or were we thinking of others and how we could contribute or be of service? But we must be careful not to drift into worry, remorse, or morbid reflection, for this would diminish our usefulness to others. After making our review, we ask God's forgiveness and inquire what constructive measures should be taken. So that's what we do at the end of the night. It's a great idea to keep your big book next to your bed. When you go to sleep, review this paragraph and follow the directions. It makes it really easy. On awakening, let us think about the 24 hours ahead. So what does he mean when he says on awakening? Okay, first thing when we wake up. Before you get up out of the bed, the moment you realize your conscience, why does he say it this way? Why does he say on awakening? Bill Wilson knows that the first thing we do when we wake up is we start thinking about all the things that are wrong and what we have to do about them and we get caught up in fear and resentment and bitterness right away. And he knows that we start our day off that way and we're headed for trouble. So he says on awakening. And he really means that. He means like the moment that you realize you're awake, think about the 24 hours ahead. Consider our plans for the day. Before we begin, we ask God to direct our thinking, especially asking that it be divorced from self-pity, dishonest, or self-seeking motives. Under these conditions, we can employ our mental faculties with assurance, for after all, God gave us brains to use. Our thought life will be placed on a much higher plane when our thinking is cleared of wrong motives. In thinking about our day, we may face indecision. We may not be able to determine which course to take. Here we ask God for inspiration, intuitive thought, or a decision. We relax and take it easy. We don't struggle. We're often surprised how the right answers come after we've tried this for a while. So what we do is we wake up in the morning. The first thing we do once we realize we're awake is we have a little conversation with God and say, please help me to be free of selfishness, dishonest, and self-seeking motives. Let me see where I can be of service today. Then we think about what we have to do during the day. All right, I gotta get up, gotta make the coffee, gotta feed the dog or the cat or whatever it is, get the kids off to school, drive to work, Oh, there's going to be rush hour traffic. You know what? As I'm going to work, please help me to have patience and tolerance and just to accept that everybody else out there in the world is trying to get somewhere also, and I'm not that special. Get to work, thinking about our day at work, who we have to deal with, who we have to interact with, who we're going to see, make sure that there's no problem areas in advance that we're going to run into there. Then think about what we have to do after work. Think about going to that 8, 8 o'clock AA meeting that we always go to and that guy that always shares that we hate is going to be there. So God... When he starts sharing, please help me to be loving and tolerant. Help me to remember that you're running the show and he may be sharing something that somebody else needs to hear. It has nothing to do with me. Whatever the situations are, we try and see them coming in advance. Say a little prayer about anything that we're not sure about how to handle, that we'd be given strength throughout the day to handle whatever comes up. In thinking about our day, we may face indecision. We may not be able to determine which course to take. Here we ask God for inspiration, an intuitive thought or decision. We relax and take it easy. We don't struggle. We're often surprised how the right answers come after we've tried this for a while. What used to be the hunch or the occasional inspiration gradually becomes a working part of the mind. Remember, when I repeat something over again, it's because you really want to hear that. So when you're thinking about your day, don't struggle. If you start to panic, you're thinking about something you have to do, that's when you want to have a little conversation with God about it. And by doing this, we're setting ourselves up for spiritual success as we go through the day. 
What used to be the hunch or occasional inspiration gradually becomes a working part of the mind. Being still inexperienced and having just made conscious contact with God, it's not probable that we're going to be inspired at all times. We might pay for this presumption in all sorts of absurd actions and ideas. Nevertheless, we find that our thinking will, as time passes, be more and more on the plane of inspiration. We come to rely upon it. We usually conclude the period of meditation with a prayer that we be shown all through the day what our next step is to be, that we be given whatever we need to take care of such problems. We ask especially for freedom from self-will and are careful to make no requests for ourselves only. We may ask for ourselves, however, if others will be helped. We are careful never to pray for our own selfish ends. Many of us have wasted a lot of time doing that, and it doesn't work. You can easily see why. So don't pray for a red Corvette so you can drive other people to AA meetings with it. <laughs> right? When you're talking to God, you can ask for anything you want to ask for. You can have a conversation about anything you want to ask about. Right? It's your relationship with God. Nobody else knows it besides you. But the history of the ages has taught us that asking God for specific things can often get us to trouble. So the suggestion that AA has to give is be careful about that sort of stuff. Ask to be free of selfishness, dishonest, or self-seeking motives, and ask to see where you can contribute. Chances are you won't go wrong with that stuff. When we get into specifics, sometimes we can get into trouble. If circumstances warrant, we ask our wives or friends to join us in morning meditation. If we belong to a religious denomination which requires a definite morning devotion, we attend to that also. If not members of religious bodies, we sometimes select and memorize a few set prayers which emphasize the principles we have been discussing. Bill's not telling us that we have to rejoin whatever religion we grew up in. What he's saying is that a lot of us have a religious history that's really rich, and there may be something in there that you can make use of. You know, he says to us later, he says, be quick to see where religious people are right. So if there's something in the religion of your upbringing that you can use as a tool for yourself, grab hold of it and use it, or in some other religion that you want to follow. There's lots and lots of information out there, There's lots and lots of stuff that we can use in order to enhance our spiritual connection. If not members of religious bodies, we sometimes select and memorize a few set prayers which emphasize the principles we've been discussing. There are many helpful books also. Suggestions about these may be obtained from one's priest, minister, or rabbi. Be quick to see where religious people are right. Make use of what they offer. What's that mean, be quick to see where religious people are right? So what it means is up until now, we've been quick to see where they're wrong. But there's lots of things that they do which work really well. So be quick to go out and find those. Look at the religions of the world and find things that work and put them into application for yourself. Make use of what they offer. As we go through the day, we pause when agitated or doubtful and ask for the right thought or action. We constantly remind ourselves we are no longer running the show humbly saying to ourselves many times each day, thy will be done. We are then in much less danger of excitement, fear, anger, worry, self-pity, or foolish decisions. We become much more efficient. We do not tire so easily, for we are not burning up energy foolishly as we did when we were trying to arrange life to suit ourselves. It's a reference back to the third step. It's a lot of work playing God, isn't it? A lot of work playing God. So we're not, bo we're not burning up energy foolishly trying to do that anymore. We alcoholics are undisciplined, so we let God discipline us in the simple way we have just outlined. Discipline in this sense isn't meant as a punishment. What it means is that we don't take on anything and put it into application for long in our lives. We don't use anything as, as a tool in our lives, transcending all aspects of life. So when we say that alcoholics are undisciplined, we let God discipline us along these lines, it's referring to that we use prayer and meditation as tools day to day in our lives in order to overcome the aspects of self which are cutting us off from relationship with God and relationship with others. It's a practice, right? A discipline is a practice. We have to put it into application. But this is not all. Guess what? There's action and more action. Faith without works is dead. The next chapter is entirely devoted to step 12. It's not an overnight matter. It's a process that should continue for our lifetime. We've got to work at perfecting and enlarging our spiritual experience. To perfect doesn't mean to make it perfect, but to refine it. These practices of inventory taking and prayer meditation are tools we use on a day-to-day -day basis in order to continue to grow, to maintain our spiritual condition.
So we're going to take a couple minutes here to get paper and pencil, and we're going to have a prayer where uh, Catherine is going to give us a prayer, and then after the prayer, there's going to be five minutes of quiet time, and we can practice this meditation. Now, it does say in the big book, you know, in the morning to practice meditation, and in the evening we practice meditation. This is our conscious contact with God as we understand Him. So again, we're going to uh, practice step 11. And as we write down our meditation after the five minutes is up, we will share this in the meeting. If you feel comfortable, please share it in the meeting. First, I'd like to talk just briefly about meditation. Keep in mind what the authors are saying in step 11. Step 11 does not say sought through prayer to improve our conscious contact. It says sought through prayer and meditation. Consider that meditation is simply listening. The thing I've discovered about, about meditation is that you cannot do it wrong and you do not need to do it right. What works for one person may not work for another. You need to find a way that works for you. What's most important is that you're willing to try it and that you're willing to attempt listening. So here's what prayer without meditation is like. Let's say my friend Rusty here calls me up and invites me to a party to his house. I say, great, I'll be right over. And I hang up before I get directions on how to get there. I'm not going to know which way to go. That's what prayer without meditation is like. I've had that experience in these rooms, not meditating and only praying. Now, my understanding of a relationship is that it involves two-way communication. That means there's talking and there's listening. So if there's talking and no listening, is that a relationship? No. So you see, I can't really have a relationship with God if all I'm doing is praying. I did that. Yeah, I'll just thank God in the morning, you know, or ask Him to keep me sober at night, thanking for keeping me sober. That's not a relationship. In order for me to have a relationship with my friend Diane here, it's necessary that I talk and then I listen. That's called two way communication. So you see, if I'm not practicing meditation in addition to the prayer, a couple of things are not going to happen. Number one, I'm not going to improve my relationship nor am I going to receive the knowledge of His will, nor am I going to receive the power to carry it out. So see, if all I'm doing is praying, I'm still operating on self-will. I make it sound like I'm living a spiritual way of life, but I'm really not. Meditation. If I am not receiving thoughts when I listen, the fault is not God's. Usually it is because there is something I will not do. These are typically some of the reasons we are blocked when we, during meditation and we're not hearing guidance. Keep in mind that guidance can be, come in the form of an intuitive thought. Here's one. Something wrong in my life that I will not face and make right. Maybe there's something I'm not willing to face. A habit or indulgence I will not give up. Now, I'm not giving that thing up. It may block me. A person I will not forget. Oh, I can't forgive them. Look what they did to me. They caused me more harm than I caused them. Guaranteed to block you. A wrong relationship in my life I will not give up. Yeah, but it's my responsibility to take care of that daughter or that son of mine. To an extent. I can't leave her. I love her too much. Can't leave him. I love him. Too. He needs me. A restitution I will not make. I'm not paying that money back. I don't need to. Something God has already told me to do that I will not obey. Here's a common experience I've had numerous times. I take something to meditation and I don't like the guidance I receive. So I do one of two things. I go out and I do some pole taking. <laughs> and I start 
asking for other people's feedback. Along the way, I'm, eventually I'm going to find somebody to endorse what I want to do. The other response I have is, I think I need to meditate on that some more. I've already received the guidance. I just don't want to do it. For example, on this, a restitution I will not make. I refuse to make that restitution, and I, and I justify why I'm not making that amend. For example, I remember in early sobriety, there was this stereo I wanted to buy. I needed to buy this kick-ass stereo for my apartment. And I had not made some major financial amends. And that's when my sponsor pointed out to me, is that your money you're spending? Oh, yeah, that's my money. I earned it. Really? Don't you owe those people X amount of dollars? Well, yeah. Then you know whose money you're spending? Theirs? Yes, I was spending their money. It was their money, not mine. It took a while for that one to register. Okay, these are some of the reasons, some of the things that can block you in meditation. Okay, basically, this is what the early AA members did. Be aware that in the 40s, the early AA members, especially in the Cleveland and Akron area, did what they called daily written meditation. They did it daily. They prayed and they meditated. After meditating, they pulled out pencil and paper and wrote down all the guidance that they received. No editing. Write it all down. And then they took those thoughts, that guidance, and they tested it against the four absolutes. See, if it's honest, pure, loving, and unselfish, I can be assured that it came from God. Keeping in mind that not everything I hear in meditation comes from God. So what this process will do for you is it will clearly... Identify the origin of your guidance. So they would take the four absolutes and test it against the guidance. This way they could be assured which guidance came from God and which came from them. Let's assume that this is the guidance you received in your meditation. Give them a peace of my mind. Is that honest, pure, loving, and unselfish? No, that came from me. Next one, be patient with others today. Is that honest, pure, loving, and unselfish? Yes. yes, that came from God. I need to avoid that person today. Is that honest, pure, loving, and unselfish? No. Be kind to others today. Is that honest, pure, loving, and unselfish? Yes, that came from God. Accept others as they are. Is that honest, pure, loving, and unselfish? Yes. So here we can be assured which guidance came from me and which came from God. Meditate after you pray. That means listen. All the guidance that comes to you, write it down on paper. Test the guidance against the four absolutes. And though I understand this is a private matter personal to you in your, in your two-way communication with God and be willing to share with us the guidance that you received from God, not the guidance you received from you. So what you do is you test it against the four absolutes, cross off the guidance that came from you. The purpose of doing this is to show you that God does exist and that he does communicate to us during meditation. Those of you that are willing to complete this exercise will be a great example to those in this room that are still doubtful that God communicates to us through meditation. There are a lot of books out there that you can read on meditation. There's one book I would recommend that you get for meditation. And it's a book that has the word meditation in it. If it says meditation, get it. If you don't have information on meditation, it's information that you don't have. There's no right way, there's no wrong way to do this. You have to find a way that works for you. What I did in the beginning was I used the serenity prayer for a period of time. I used the 12 steps. In other words, I would recite all 12 steps in my head so I could get quiet. You can try using 
breathing exercises or simply focusing on your breathing. Go through a process where you're relaxing the entire body. You know, where you're starting at the top of your head and you're telling yourself, I'm okay, I'm going to relax my head, my neck, my shoulders, my chest, my stomach, etc., etc. Whatever works for you. Personally, I like to have a quiet place. When I do my meditation, I go a place where there's no phones and there's no TV and there's no one knocking on the door. And I go through my prayers and I go through this process of attempting to become quiet and still. In the beginning, it was real difficult. There was a lot of chatter going on in my head. The worst thing we can do during meditation is trying to stop it. Let it happen. Don't try to control the chatter in your head. Practice the daily written meditation. Okay, we're going to take a five-minute quiet time and practice step 11 and listen to God. We're going to ask Him to direct our thinking so thoughts that come are coming from God. Now, how do we know the difference between what's coming from God and what's coming from us? We use the four absolutes. Is it honest, pure, unselfish, and loving? It must pass all four absolutes. If it fails one of the liabilities of self-will, which is dishonesty, resentment, and fear, and selfishness, it only has to have one, one liability to fail the guidance. Uh, that is coming from self, and we're interested in what is passing the four absolutes. So we're going to take a couple minutes here to get paper and pencil, and we're going to have a prayer where... Uh, Catherine is going to give us a prayer and then after the prayer there's going to be five minutes of quiet time and we can practice this meditation now it does say in the big book you know in the morning to practice meditation and then evening we practice meditation this is our conscious contact with God as we understand him so again we're going to uh, practice step 11 and as we write down our meditation after the five minutes is up, we will share this in the meeting. If you feel comfortable, please share it in the meeting. It's um, it's nice to have some kind of ritual around it where you do a reading or something. Some people like to breathe deeply or have a special place that they sit every day and do this, a quiet place somewhere you feel comfortable, somewhere that you're honoring this, you know, this procedure. Okay. Well, and again, you know, this is a this is a spiritual exercise like everything else. So is prayer. Now. What we like to do uh, one time I was doing my prayer and meditation few years ago and I and I got the the uh, the message or the direction to write what I all I could think of calling it was a pre prayer prayer <laughs> something to get me in the right space you know so that I wasn't uh, I wasn't off base and and um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this prayer and then we're all going to sit quietly and write down whatever comes to mind and, re and for just two or three minutes. And remember, you can't do this wrong and you can't fake it either. <laughs> it's going to it's just going to happen. It'll be fun. We're going to we're going to uh, hear what some of these uh, responses are that we get. It's really exciting. OK, here is our uh, here's the prayer I wrote. God, during this quiet time. I pray that my writing will reflect that my life is presently being guided by unselfishness, honesty, purity, and love. I pray to now open myself to receive your guidance and direction. I pray for the will to take your direction in a timely manner that I may continue to grow spiritually and experience a profound life of serenity and joy. Amen. 
Okay, let's do our writing.
Okay, we'll stop there. That was about four minutes. It's a long time when we sit quietly with our higher power, isn't it? It feels good. Well, thank you for doing this exercise with us. We realize that these messages can be very personal and are normally discussed with only your sponsor or sharing partner. However, if you believe the group can benefit from what you have received, we're asking you to share it with us now. In addition, you will be helping those who are still struggling with the 11th step to see how God discloses himself to us. Now, only share what you have written without further explanation. We'll be here all day otherwise. <laughs> and I know it's tempting, but, you know, you'll have a chance to share this with other people in the future. Now, let's keep it simple. I always want to try to keep it simple. Now, who is willing to start us off with what they have written down? After everybody has shared their guidance, we have what we call three-way prayer. Now, this is something... You heard the expression, God talks through people. Uh, the three-way prayer is in reference to guidance that you've shared tonight in the meeting that has helped somebody else in the meeting. And that's considered three-way prayer. So, in other words, we're going to share our guidance that we receive from our five-minute meditation. Write it down, and we're going to share it. After we're all done sharing our two-way prayer with God anybody in the room that has listened to your guidance and has benefited from their guidance is considered three way prayer and we encourage you to write that down so we will share the three way prayer immediately after we share the guidance from you your meditation hopefully that makes sense I again basically we're going to share our meditation as we write it down on the paper after we're all done people in the room who have benefited from your guidance will write that down also and that's considered three-way prayer so we encourage you to write down anything that you hear from somebody else and we'll share that also and that's called three-way prayer Okay, at this point, we're going to turn off the tape player, and we're going to take the time to listen to meditation that you've written down in your five-minute quiet time. That's considered two-way prayer. We're also going to take the time to listen to three-way prayer. Now, the three-way prayer is in reference to anything that you've heard from somebody else that has helped you tonight concerning guidance and we encourage you to write that down also. So again, we're going to take the time to do that. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the tape player. Once we've shared the two-way prayer,